So yes, and um, since I was in the middle of a few other things, I, I told Sue, why don't you just come up with a title for me? And so, um, enhanced student understanding by developing an emanation for the dynamic process showing how polar and non-polar <laughs> molecules are physically separated on a gas chromatography. Or, another way of putting it is, how I made a chemistry animation. <laughs> Whichever one you prefer. <laughs> um, so I just want to go through kind of like the ins and outs of um, what the goal was, how I went about doing it, what the ultimate result was, and then areas uh, of improvement that I see. So now that I have this like extra time on my hands during the summer, hopefully get uh, things changed around. So first off, um, what did I use for animation? Well. Um, I didn't use something that was you know, a dedicated piece of animation software. Um, I ended up using Camtasia, which I had already been using, and quite a number of other um, faculty out there in the educational system use for doing screencasts uh, in order to capture their lectures, sometimes both a combination of video and audio. Uh, what I really like about it is that it's a really easy to use interface. Uh, well, at the same time, it has a lot of good uh, post-edit cap capabilities uh, that aren't too hard to, to master after you've gotten some practice. So, um, in addition to the editing capabilities, you also have the ability to add visual properties, or in other words, animations, to any particular media objects that you put onto your screen. And so, I really kind of explored is can I use this rather basic form of animation to get across the point that I want to convey to the students you know, who have a hard time visualizing how molecules move across a gas chromatography column. So, um, and like I said, easy to use for the beginner without all the bells and whistles that come with, say for example, something that might come from Adobe. Um, so, where do I begin? So I was like, I volunteered um, to do this. And once I kind of sat back and thought about it, I, I said, OK, no need to reinvent the wheel, start from scratch. I'm not going to go too extensively into graphics. Number one, I'm not the best artist in the world. And there's actually a lot of stuff, data, already out there on the internet. So like I was saying to Paul yesterday, after being inspired uh, with all the Creative Commons content that's out there, um, you're actually able to find a very large suppository of images, be it from Google or from Flickr, a um, couple other options there. But as long as it was Creative Commons, I grabbed it and uh, put it into my kind of like my bin of images that I use to construct this. GC animation. Um, and then I took a look at what others had done because, yeah, there were a few YouTube videos out there, folks that had shown how grass, gas chromatography works. Some of them were really elaborate with their graphics, but not so elaborate with their animations or vice versa. Um, so it kind of gave me a, an idea of what has been done, what hasn't been done, and what approach do I want to use to try to Know, get this conveyed to the students. So in a nutshell, I decided, OK, don't make it too elaborate. And for those who are familiar with this acronym, <laughs> OK, yes, keep it simple, stupid. So um, that was the approach there. If I keep it simple, not too elaborate, there'll be less opportunity for confusion with the students. And they can get you know, the main point across. They don't have to be interested in all the intricate details as long as I get the main concepts of what we want them to get from this lab, mission accomplished. So what do I want the animation to show? So conceptually, what do I want to give them an idea of? Well, first off, the overall setup. What, it, what are the components of the gas chromatograph? Um, what parts are actually involved in, you know, what parts are used in the actual lab that they are conducting remotely in this Danzel lab. Secondly, can I also at the same time go down to the you know, microscopic or nanoscopic view down to the level of molecules and actually show 
you know, from an animation point, not exactly how they move, but theoretically what's supposed to be happening as molecules move through the instrumentation. Um, and how do I show that the molecules are moving at different rates? So I might have to, you know, show, how can I show over the course of this chromatography column that due to interactions with the column, some molecules are going through it rather slowly, others are going through it rather quickly. So, so I used Canatage for the animation, like I said. Um, I wasn't, um, again, too elaborate with how the animation was done, um, but just so you know, from what Camtasia is capable of, I can move in the X, Y, or Z axis. I can actually show the molecules moving on both a large scale, you know, like the, capital, um, the GC column zoomed out, and perhaps a small portion of it zoomed in, so people can see how these animated molecules move around. Um, one challenge that I found though is if I'm going to show two different, two different perspectives kind of zoomed out and one zoomed in, everything had to be timed out just right in terms of as soon as I get to the zoomed in portion of my animation, I have to make sure that the position of them is correct, the timing of where they're moving through the zoomed in portion still coincides with that zoomed out view. So um, that was a, a little bit of a challenge in of itself. Um, so this uh, this right here is just a quick little quick little snippet to show. I believe it m might or might not. We'll see. Short little video just showing you what Camtasia is capable of in terms of animation on a on a very basic scale. So here I have our logo for our college just because I'm biased and. Um, <laughs> I went ahead and just showed how you can change around the X position, you can change around the Y position. You can either do this by dragging the actual object with your mouse, or you can actual, actually enter in numerical data if you wish to on the pane on the left-hand side. Either is acceptable. I started off using the mouse, but then as I was trying to time things out in terms of those two scales, I actually had to use the numerical one to make sure everything was positioned just right. Um, you can also rotate um, X, Y, Z with regards to rotation. Not so much something I used for this time around, but it is something you can do if you're wondering what else Camtasia is capable of. I'm trying to remember what else I had on here. So, Z rotation. rotation. Oh, I'm showing how you construct an animation. So what you actually do for an animation is you tell Camtasia where you want the end of your motion to be at. Add that animation in and it will put this arrow in place where it shows hey, the animation is going to begin at the beginning of the arrow and at the end of the arrow is that final position that I told it, it was going to be at. So and you have two options for how the animation is going to move or flow. There's one way that involves easing and not easing. Uh, no easing means just it goes from point A to point B at the same travel rate. To ease in and out of it means to start off kind of quickly out of the gate and then it actually gets up to speed and then it actually gradually slows down as it gets down toward the end of the pass. So some advantages there based on you know, what am I trying to convey motion-wise. So I believe I, I kept everything to non-easing just because I didn't need things like slapping around back and forth a whole bunch to make it seem like a pinball game <laughs> in slow motion. So here's my First iteration, I actually, I wish I would have had more time to construct this, but with the pilot um, for this lab being done in like a couple weeks, I had to get down and dirty and actually make this as quick as I could. So 
Again, just showing the overall construction of the whole instrument. I zoomed down to the individual column itself, gave some information about what the column consisted of, this nonpolar compound that it's packed with. I show, hey, here's this polar nonpolar molecule. We'll pass through it. And we're going to have them start off out of the gate in the column at pretty much the same time, because they have similar boiling points. And my first approach involving just the nonpolar and polar molecules bunched up together. And when I first sent this out, um, I got some good feedback on it from the other Dan, Colorado Dan, um, Brandon, who said, you know, this is a good, good place to start, but things don't actually like flow nice and smoothly all the way through. Could you perhaps like show them bouncing off the column and actually the nonpolar ones traveling much faster through, well, or sorry, the polar ones passing through much quicker and the nonpolar ones actually kind of slightly sticking and slowing down. So, and then the, I don't know whether you'll notice it here with the final rev with this, but uh, he said, oh, and we don't need to show the carrier gas because there's no actual inert gas that's hooked up to our GC units that we use for the Nanzo lab. These actually run off of just pure air from the surroundings, uh, which is a big advantage to using that system. So same type of beginning to the animation, but now when I go into the zoom in on the actual column itself, now I'm not gonna actually show things. Ooh, got something to fix there. Looks like it jumped show what the column was made up of, but now when I show the polar, nonpolar molecules passing through the column, now I'm going to show a lot more motion and interaction with the contents of the column themselves. And the polar, nonpolar molecules actually, you know, m coming back and forth across from each other. So here's probably a better representation of what in reality is actually happening down the column. Maybe there are a few molecules in there that are easing in and out. I'll have to check that. <laughs> I tried. I tried. So this actually ended up being the version that we did, that I did upload to YouTube, provided the link to. Um, and this was part of the pre-laboratory assignment that the students did prior to actually doing the Nanza lab themselves. So at least conceptually, they could understand how some molecules are retained in the column longer because they interact with the contents of the column more than something that might have a quite different polarity to the contents of the column. So. That's what I ended up posting up. But anyway, um, I don't know whether you could tell, but uh, there was no sound to any of this. And that was the very first feedback that I got from my students and the other students who took it from other colleges was, I thought there was something wrong with the sound on my computer. I didn't know I was going to watch a silent movie. <laughs> Stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, I should probably put a little maybe background music in there, or even better yet, couple the background music with actual narration. Just, you know, not too elaborate again, just something very simplified, explain what the setup is, what they're looking at, what the animation is trying to convey. Um, I know the animation can convey a little bit enough in of itself as long as they read up on the concept beforehand. But if I were to show this to somebody who hadn't done any reading whatsoever and probably just watched the video, which, let's face it, that can happen, um, <laughs> then having some narration on top of that would definitely help out with their level of understanding. So I have something scripted, so I would like to do kind of like a version 3.0 with this over the summer and get that um, 
as a revamped version uh, before this uh, before this grant runs out. And then maybe because I am like on the side learning some more about Adobe After Effects, like do something that's maybe a little more elaborate with the way that the motion is animated. But uh, that would definitely be a long-term goal if if I had a week to myself to actually sit down and go through After Effects and spend some time with it to get familiar. I'm sure I could take the animation to the next level, which not only would benefit this lab, but other labs in the future where we could possibly see animations, you know, enhancing that learning experience of taking something that's beyond text on a page and put something that's really abstract and an airplane back black box and turn it into something that's a concept that actually the student can digest and doesn't seem, you know, so difficult in the first place because I know what it's like as a student myself. I took analytical chemistry. I felt like we were just, hey, you inject the sample in here and this stuff spits out on the other end and I analyze it and I, yet I had no idea what happened in the middle. Um, and so this does a good job of at least being a starting point to start to understand that. So thank you very much. Thank you.